Rakesh. Good morning to all of you. Too many speeches, right? So we'll, we'll try and keep this to an informal conversation if possible. When Nagesh first called me and said, look, KGK is retiring, will you say a few words? I was mortified. You know, my first reaction was, no, I can't do this. Uh, and the reason is, how do you take 20 years of a man's life and fit it into 20 minutes? I mean, it's, it's, it's a mind-boggling task. And even more than that, like all of you out there, I hate goodbyes. You know, I wish they didn't exist. I wish we didn't have to do them. But it's the law of the universe that there's a time and place for everything, and this is the time for a goodbye. So here we are. Mr. KGK Pillay is someone that I've known intimately for a long, long time. And perhaps there's no one better than me to be doing this discussion. And I thank you, Nagesh, for giving me this uh, opportunity. Because I thought about it. And I came here in the summer of 94. I've known KGK now for 20 years. He's seen my hair turn white. I have seen his hair miraculously turn black. <laughs> associated with him for that longer, Sanjay Bhai, Shailesh Bhai, Ernest, many members of the staff who know him for as long as that. I have an even more unique qualification, which is that possibly I am the only person in this room who has interacted with him in three, three totally different avatars. First, as a young, fresh student, barely out of his teens, and he was the guardian to whom we were assigned on campus. The second avatar was as an alumni, going out and trying to make a mark in the career, in the world outside, and interacting with him as an alumni. And in a somewhat bizarre twist, the third avatar was as a governing council member, where our roles sort of interchanged. Right? And as a result of these three in types of interactions, I have come to know three very strong strengths of KGK that I'd like to highlight today. And obviously, as a eulogy, I'm going to say a lot of good things. And for the cynics out there, does this mean there are no shades of gray? No, it doesn't. All of us have shades of gray. But at the end of the day, what defines a man is the sum total of his personality, the principles and values that he lives for. Right? And that's what we're going to talk about. The three qualities that I'd really like to highlight are that of an able administrator, a genuinely good human being, Note this, please. Far too often we tend to discount this quality. A genuinely good human being, and third, a consummate professional. Let me explain why I say this. In the summer of 94, when we landed here, many of us, kids who had boarded trains from various parts of the country and arrived, many for the first time in Gujarat and the Bar. This was a very different place then. All that existed was the central, central block, right? All around you was sheer jungle. Not that I minded. I spent many hours chasing snakes and birds in the jungle. But logistically, it was a nightmare. We didn't have accommodation on campus. We had to stay, not bad, but we stayed in Sterling City Club. Essentially, you had to be bussed back and forth. There was hardly any habitation in between. There was fields. If you went back late in the night, you would have somber deer and langurs run across the road. It was desolate, right? It, this presented a tremendous logistics and administrative challenge. You had to be bussed back and forth. If four people decided to stay back in the library and study for an hour, you had to figure out how you were going to get them back to the Sterling City Club. If someone fell ill, the nearest doctor was 15 kilometers away. If a visiting faculty had to be brought in, he had to shift two flights into Ahmedabad and then be transported back and forth. The effort that was required to set up this institution, put together all the government regulatory approvals mechanisms, get it up and running, and at the end of the day, never once did any of us feel that things were out of control, that we were, you know, things were not going the right way, or that we were not completely well looked after. 
And that, I think, is an ode to the administrative capability of Mr. Pillay, as well as the team that used to work with him at that point. After this, I became an alumni, and I must shamefacedly accept that I went out into the world and forgot all about my career, right? I was busy becoming a corporate rock star and uh, spending all my time doing hard work, etc. It so happened that my sister landed up in Ahmedabad to study as well. She didn't come to my car. She's a little bit more creative than me, so she was at NID. And as luck would have it, she contracted <coughs> typhoid and fell terribly ill. I was a junior executive at that time and I couldn't take off. My boss wasn't very accommodating. My parents had personal illnesses of their own. So what did I do? I didn't call up a friend, I didn't call up a relative, I didn't call up office colleagues. Who do you think I called? KGK Pillay. He said, Mr. Pillay, my sister is ill. I said, can you just keep an eye on her? The next thing I knew, he had landed up in the NID campus. Are you Sandeepan's sister? Yes. Pack up, right? He had taken her and he took her home. And he and his wife took care of her till she recovered. This is a quality that <laughs> is a quality that you don't find easily where people go out of their way to help people, right? And that's why I say he's a genuinely good human being. It's something that we must value as you go into your corporate lives. It's become very fashionable to be very to be a shark, right? to go in there, get stuff done, someone's in the way, get them out. But remember that the value of being a good human being, placing values, principles, and respect for people, and going out of your way to help people, will get you further than being a shark any day in life. This is a truth, and something that you realize with age. Finally, in the third instance, by a strange sequence of incidents, I ended up on the governing council, right? And now I was on the management team. And this is when we started having some really bizarre conversations, me and Mr. Pillai, right? So Mr. Pillai, in his uh, inimicable style, decided that he must now call me <coughs> sir, right? And I was, obviously, this went down very badly with me because, you know, since 1994 and even now in private, I always address him as sir. So we have these bizarre conversations. <coughs> sir, please don't call me sir. <laughs> and then he would say, no sir, you know it is not for Mr. Sandeep Menon, it is the position, we must respect the position, right, and th that, that was KGK, and it happened that thereafter, obviously as part of my job, at many points of time, I had to instead review him, in some cases counsel him, and sometimes even berate him, and it is to the credit of the man that he never blinked. <coughs> Right? He never missed a step or never ever came up saying, hey, you're the guy that I was setting up a hostel room for 20 years back. Right? And that you can only do when you're a consummate professional. <coughs> and I think that's something that I really admire about him. In today's world, especially, you find the situation where if you do well, and I'm sure all of you will, and I've faced this many times in my life, you will find that you have people who are much older, and spent a lot of time in the industry reporting into you, right? And the ability to find people who can accept that and to treat it with the professionalism that is required is not that easily possible, and that's something that we must admire as well. These are the three things that I really wanted to highlight. I'm sure we could go on and on about stories. In fact, I think that if we were to start a blog about KGK stories, it would be filled with endearing anecdotes, you know, how we wanted to set up a marriage bureau on campus and so on. <laughs> uh, he did <laughs> not told me about it. <laughs> now, you know, as the batches pass through, many of you will have many memories of him. In some cases, he has had to be tough, and there's a reason why he had to be tough. And in many, many cases, He's been extremely liberal, right? Especially when he believes that the people involved can handle it. Uh, I, I remember this funny story where someone from my batch came into Ahmedabad from Delhi and he noticed that there were no traffic signals in uh, Ahmedabad. And he went and asked uh, KGK, sir, uh, 
there are no red lights here. <laughs> and KGK very cautiously says, there are, but it's an old city. <laughs> Sir, I need some help. There is probably no one who can say that I, I was turned away disappointed. Right. And that, that really summarizes it. Uh, at the end of the day, it's often said that our lives are not evaluated on the basis of how much we earn or what we do, <coughs> but by the impact that we leave on the lives that we touch. Sir, you've left an everlasting impact on the lives of thousands of people who've passed through this campus. Thank you. <laughs>